today's topic is relationship between average variable cost and average product so the average variable cost you know they bears an important relationship between average product so average variable cost and average product they have a close relationship so average product means you know the product per unit of the variable factor so let q be the quantity of total product that is produced and l is the amount of variable factor let us say labor and w is the price which is incurred per unit of variable factor or the price that is paid for the use of variable factor that is labor and ap is the average product of the variable factor so in this we assume that the price of the variable factor remains unchanged or unaltered as more of the as more or fewer units of variable factor are employed so after assuming that we can say that average product equals to the total output divided by the unit of variable factor that is employed so average product is the output per unit of variable factor that is employed and we have discussed what is average variable cost which is given by total variable cost divided by the output that is produced so to get average variable cost we divide the total variable cost by the level of or unit of output that is produced so this is the diagrammatical representation of the relationship between the average product and the average variable cost so now given the quantity of fixed factors so fixed factors are those capital you know machinery which cannot be changed during a short period of time so given those quantity of fixed factors since we are talking about variable cost fixed factors are given and when more labors is employed so labor is considered to be a variable factor so given the fixed factors such as capital and when more labor is employed for the production of a commodity you know the average product of labor rises in the beginning so you will see from the diagram that this average product rises in the beginning as fixed factors are given and then more laborers are employed for the production of commodity in the beginning the average product rises and again given the wage rate of labor so when you are employing a labor you have to pay wages to the laborer so given the wage rate of labor you know the rise in average product of labor will cause average variable cost to decline so the rise in the average product so in the beginning we have said that there is a rise in the average product and this will cause the average variable cost to decline so you will see that this is the average variable cost as average product is rising in the beginning as more laborers are employed to produce goods you will see that the rise in average product will cause the average variable cost to decline in the beginning and when so look at this average product curve again and when this average product reaches a certain point let us say at this point when more labor is used with a given quantity of the fixed factor you know the average product of labor falls so after reaching this point this average product begin to fall because of the operation of the diminishing returns so we have explained what is diminishing returns so because of the operation of the diminishing returns the average product you know after reaching a certain point it has began to fall and again given the wage rate the fall in the average product so here after reaching this point the average product curve has started to fall 
So, because of the fall in the average product, given the wage rate, you know, this will cause the average variable cost to rise. So, when this average product cost is falling, what will happen to average variable cost? So, the average variable cost began to rise as the, you know, average product curve began to fall. Thus, the average variable cost first falls. So, in the beginning, it is falling. And then after a point, it started to rise. So, you, as you can see from this curve, after reaching this minimum point, the lowest point, it has began to rise again. That is, you know, the average variable cost is roughly U-shaped. So, this average variable curve will look like a u shape because in the beginning it is falling and then after reaching a minimum point it has begun to rise again that is why it is looking like a u shape so the relationship between this average product curve and average variable cost is you know graphically represented here so on the x axis we are measuring output and then on the y axis in the panel A, we are measuring average product and marginal product. And in the second panel, we are measuring average variable cost and marginal cost on the Y axis and quantity of output in the X axis. And in this panel A, on the X axis, we are measuring quantity of labor that is employed. So this diagram or this graphical representation depicts the relationship between average product and then average variable cost and as you see from this figure 3 you will see that you know the average variable cost and the average product they are inversely related to each other which means the average product rises in the beginning as more units of labor are employed or as more units of variable factors are employed the average variable cost must be falling so in the beginning when ap is rising you see that average variable cost is falling and in the second phase when average product is falling you see that the average variable cost curve began to rise so which means that they are inversely you know related they vary inversely And again, at the level of output at which, you know, the average product is maximum. So, this point, average product is maximum. And when average product is reaching a maximum point, the average variable cost will be in the minimum point. So, thus, as you see from this figure number 3, the average variable cost you know, looks like the average product curve that is turned upside down with the minimum point of AVC curve, you know, corresponding to the maximum point of average product. So this <coughs> AVC curve looks like the AP curve, which is turned upside down. And when AP average product is having a maximum point, AVC will be having a minimum point, which means that this AVC a average variable cost curve is just, you know, the opposite or it is just like a AP curve which is turned upside down. So the relationship that happens between product, uh, average product and average variable cost is that they vary inversely.